Hi guys, uh, welcome back. And today I'm going from um, uh, Quito, and I'm going to just do a day ride. It's Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas. Even though I'm recording this way later, so it doesn't actually mean anything. Um, but uh, so basically, I started at my hotel first light again. Um, the hotel I was staying at, the JW Marriott, pretty nice hotel. Um, just uh, just some really annoying things, you know, about those hotels where they, you know, they when you when you go to um, like Expedia or any of that, they say they have high speed internet. Then you get there, and then they've got an ultra high speed internet. The high speed internet that you get there, this is like a quality hotel, a four and a half, four four five star hotel. And then when you get there, they say, oh, the um, the um, the, the internet is, uh, um, oh, well, the, you know, the internet's not working today, and you know, just all that crap. You have to deal with it. I don't know, this, this is the thing with hotels is, they've got massive competition from Airbnb, uh, and they still continue to do crappy things. But anyway, the first thing I've got to do is apologize for the first five or 10 minutes of this video with, uh, with my camera. Um, so what happens with the Drift Ghost is you, you, you have it on, you can actually turn the camera sideways, just, just in the front. And what I've been doing is, as I was riding up to the, up to the crater here, um, the first part of the ride was just terribly boring. I looked at the video, there's just nothing to show there. Um, but as I was riding, riding up the crater, there was a bit of, I had some rain. So I just wiped the, I've got a cloth on my tank bag and I use that, there's some kids there. And I just gave these kids some lollies. They're pretty cold just standing by the side of the road. Uh, they're lovely kids. Um, yeah, so uh, the... Bye bye. Yeah, so when bye -bye. I wiped it, I must have turned the camera around a little bit, you know? And... Um, and I didn't realize it until I basically had a little stop off about five or 10 minutes further on. Um, it's just one of the towns on the way up to uh, Kilatoa. Uh, um, and uh, there's a lot of beautiful little villages along the way. Uh, once, once you turn off the main highway and start going up to the, to the mountain, uh, it's pretty cool. As you can see, fairly bright day and where I was, this, I was on the wrong side of the sun, so the sun was coming up with pointing at the camera, which makes it very bright in the background. Um, so the time to go if you're going to go up there, the Kilatoa, is, uh, is actually to go up in the afternoon as the sun's getting over the other side and you'll get the best photos. Um, I, I was up there in the morning, but a fantastic ride up there through all these uh, mountains. Not a lot of trees, a lot of farming communities, uh, indigenous communities up here. Um, and to drive, driving up to the to the uh, crater, the roads are really good. Um, on the if you're going to do the loop, and people do it trekking, they they trek the route. If you're going to do the route all the way around, it's a mix of reasonably old country style off road uh, roads, and then some off road, and then there's some road works and all that sort of stuff. All the villages are, are paved roads, so those pavers, so they can be pretty rough as well, but it was really fantastic. Again, I apologize for the for the angle of the camera. Um, I should have checked to make sure that it was set up correctly. And you'll see kids just walking along the road, old, really old people carrying like lots of like firewood and stuff like that. And there's a stopped off at a couple of little villages along the way and just had a walk through the markets. Um, but pretty cool sort of uh, area, and again, I'm, this, this video, this video stuff is pretty bad. But it's uh, it's a really good day, and, and you, if you're going to Quito and you, you're going to do the ride, uh, drop in at the Freedom Bike Rentals and get a map off them. So they have a map with all these different tracks you can go on as well, and they're really cool guys in there. Even if you're not going to use their services. Uh, um, they will, uh, they will uh, look after you anyway. Um, the 
and you can hire motorbikes from them and they do a they do a multi-day tour or just a single day tour or you can just rent the motorbikes. Um, the actual crater is is you know it's a it's a massive like it's three kilometers of uh, water so it's a caldera it's where the the uh, there it is there so it's where the volcano is um, that's where the volcano last erupted I think 800 um, 800, 800 years ago or something like that was the last uh, eruption and apparently it spelt lava all through um, Quito and and uh, lava and ash all, all the way for quite a while um, even got to the ocean apparently the so it must have been a pretty big there's my hero shot unfortunately it's uh, the the uh, the light was so strong with the with the sun coming through those clouds and so then I made my way around the loop now it's a it's a long way um, it's a long ride all the way around but it's well worth it and you go through all these little villages along the way um, on the way back this one's one of the larger ones uh, but a lot of them are very small little villages a lot of indigenous people and I stopped off at one of them and had a barbecue so they have they're cooking like pigs and all this sort of stuff and and it's a pretty lively, this was Christmas Day, so it's a pretty lively sort of day. Um, the indigenous people sort of mix, their, mix a, a bit of their own faith with the Catholic faith. Uh, so their own uh, superstitions, I, sh I shouldn't say that. Well, yeah, well, it is. A, I mean, it, you know, it's a, it's a mix of uh, a few superstitions and stuff like that. A few, a few, uh, um, few things that they believe of power and control and, and then also the... Just a lot of people walking on the road. You've got to be a little bit careful. That was a really old person. Um, I've seen like 80, 90 year olds walking on the roads carrying a whole bunch of sticks and things like that. Um, it's pretty crazy, you know. So this is where I stopped off and found out that the camera wasn't uh, working properly. Um, I, the, I think it's uh, one more video after one more short video after this one, and then the camera's back to normal again. But on a beautiful sunny day, God, it would be amazing, you know, it would be a fantastic ride. Um, I was here uh, in Quito, I was staying in Quito for uh, uh, for, th uh, for three nights, um, and then I was going to make my way south to a villa camp, I uh, well, can't remember the name of the place, uh, make my way south and spend a, uh, a night or two there. So I was going to spend New Year's Eve in uh, Ecuador, and then... Uh, and then head head across the border uh, the day after New I think the day after New Year's Eve I think New Year's Day or the day after I'm not quite sure what day I actually left to go but uh, really good riding day um, I did another little tour uh, in, in from Quito you go to the center of the world which is not really the center of the world there's a whole thing set up there but it's actually not actually in the right spot. Um, <laughs> so, so it was obviously set up years ago before they did exact measurements uh, right on the equator. Um, but uh, I think it's like a few hundred metres or four or five hundred metres away or something, I can't remember. Um, yeah, so they've got a whole big museum there and they've got a whole uh, cultural centre and stuff like that. Um, so there's two trips that I did while I was there. I did ones of there and I did some... Uh, did some shopping as well. It's a big city. Um, really, really friendly people, and uh, I actually uh, I, I ran into one of the guys from our um, from our uh, from the Star Rat from the ship from that went to from Panama to Cartagena, and I, I thought that he worked at the um, I thought he was a person who worked at the hotel I was at because uh, you know I wasn't thinking that I'm going to meet somebody there. I was you know I was only with them for three days. Um, but still pretty poor form from me. But when I saw him, I knew I knew him from somewhere and I was just trying to think, but I just wasn't thinking I was going to run into anyone from the ship. And there was 20 people on the ship and he was from uh, Western Australia. He's a really nice guy. Um, but I didn't spend that much time with him on the ship chatting. Um, and uh, I didn't really spend that much time chatting to that many people because the thing about it is when I woke up the, on the, from the Star Rap the first day, we were just all getting to know, you know, I just sat at the table, so whoever was there talking, and he was off talking with other people, and then went to sleep, woke up the next day, um, and again, just at the table, 
and then I went out into the bow of the boat, onto the netting at the bow, and uh, just relaxed there, fell asleep in the afternoon for a few hours, and then that night, so um, it's still poor form from me, but I just, it was just so bad that I, uh, I felt so bad because I had to ask the guy where do I know him from. At first I thought he worked in the hotel, and then he told me, and I'm going, oh my God, what an idiot. I'm so sorry, you know. Um, so I don't think he felt bad or anything like that, but it was pretty, I felt like a bit of a dick, you know. Um, so this again is another one of the towns, and this is where I stopped and had the bar, had a barbecue, and uh, there was a lot of um, a lot of market, like a big market stall and stuff like that. But a really, really, really pretty place. Um, so yeah, so the ride back was uh, was uh, was quite long, you know. It was a lot, actually a lot longer than. Uh, than I, than I thought it would be. Um, and it ended up taking me, I'm just trying to see the, it took me seven hours the whole day uh, because once you got up into the mountains, it was really slow going through all the, um, through all the towns because there's quite a lot of villages along the way. And there was a lot of, a bit of a mix of off road and, and old roads and stuff like that. And then you know, I had to get on back onto the highway back into Quito and that was boring as all hell. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think from now on, from here on, after my lunch, I've got yeah. This is this is where I fixed the camera. There you go. I fixed the camera. Um, but uh, there's some more kids along the side. I gave lollies to, and what you know, it's a good thing to have something to give them. Um, and you know, they don't really care care about having a business card or a, a cool card or anything like that. But there's two things that I would bring on my next trip. I have business cards with my, uh, you know, contact details for WhatsApp and for um, for email and uh, and Instagram. Uh, the, the next time I'll I'll do cards, but I'll also do thank you postcards, so that I can write. This is a 360 camera. There's a couple of shots there. There's a little river running through. It was a really pretty little spot. Someone was shouting out to me there the whole time. I couldn't see where they were though. Um, but yeah, so the next time I'm going to get postcards, maybe a couple hundred postcards, a hundred postcards, and just to give to people to thank them for all the different things, because I probably met 50, 60 people along the way where I'd really thank them for what they did for me, or, you know, people would offer you food when I went camping at people's houses, they'd come in for food and I'd leave them some money, but it'd be nice to leave them a little thank you card and just write a little, a, a little postcard, create your own postcards, write a little thank you note on the postcard. Um, and then just leave the money with them and stuff like that, you know. So, um, it's all it's all about, you know, doing the right thing and, and the money is the right thing, but it'd be nice to leave them something else to to, to, to remind them. So there's a, so on the way back on the Quidaloa, uh, Quidaloa, Kilatoa, Kilatoa, it's pronounced, I'm pretty sure, on the Kilatoa loop. There's part of the road is being done, so this part of the road has been completed. So obviously they're, they're making the road all the way around uh, and make it a, making it a big tourist thing. And so it should be because it is pretty cool. But there is a lot of off roading uh, as well, and there's a lot of uh, road works going on that's all dirt and a bit of mud and stuff like that. Um, so it was pretty slow, slow going. It was nice, it was a really nice day's ride. So the, those Freedom bike rentals, I told them about my issue with my tyre and they've got mechanics there and they said drop it off for a couple of days there. So I did that, I think I ended up staying four nights actually there because I wanted to get that tyre fixed uh, and the KTM was closed. Uh, so those guys said yeah, yeah, no worries, we'll, we'll help you out. So I left it there with, with them for for two days and um, so I'm trying to think of what when I um, to when I actually uh, left there so the uh, 20, 25th I did the uh, Kilotoa loop um, yeah so it was actually the 29th so I got there on the 24th so I stayed actually four nights 24th night 25th night 26th night 27th night, 28th night, so five nights actually, stayed in Quito, uh, which was longer than I had originally planned. Um, but, uh, 
you know, you, the thing about it with the bike is, once I got from uh, Ecuador into Peru, I was, you know, I was on my own, and there wasn't going to be too many opportunities to get bikes serviced and and run into any issues. And I just didn't want to have an issue going down south because there's a lot more off-roading to do and stuff like that. And having having air coming, air pressure coming out of the tire was not something I was looking forward to having issues with down the track. And and luckily enough, after two KTM places tried to fix it, um, a non-KTM place was able to fix the and make sure that the, it was sealed. And I tell you what, it was a huge relief. Um, the thing about it is, the funny thing about it is, once I got the San, Santiago Chile, I got the new tire on there, I told them about the, the issue with the leak, and then there was a leak after that. It never got so bad, uh, but I was pretty much on my own. I tried to take the tire off and then see where, if I could seal it any better, but I couldn't. Um, and so I was left with that issue. Um, so yeah, this, this part of the road I think is under construction. Yeah, this part of the road is under construction and uh, there, there's just hardly any cars along the way. So it wasn't that big a deal. Um, but there, there was some pretty shitty patches. And the one thing about this, uh, uh, the Heidenau K60 Scouts is the, the one downside of the tyre is, is hard surface with uh, wet top. Um, that's where the, the, the tyres really, really struggled. Um, and, you know, and that was only at the size, of, mine's a big bike and it's the biggest tyre size they make for motorcycles. And there's no tread down the middle of the bottom, middle of the tyre. So it's, um, it's a little bit of a, a little bit painful uh, to deal with. Sorry about the, uh, the feedback from the wind onto the onto the uh, camera, uh, the microphone. So from this point on, um, the, the, this was the last. I think this this and the next one are the last of the roads that were actually uh, done, and then it was all uh, the old road or off road. But just beautiful scenery all the way around, you know. The drift camera does have an issue with the crackling. The 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 point at which the 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 jack goes into the camera after a, after a few weeks of putting it in and out and stuff like that, it's the, it, there's some connection problem with it where it does get that crackle every now and then, and it's really annoying. And you never really know because once the the camera's on your helmet. You, you try to, I try to clean it and make sure that it was clean and put it in and out and, um, and sometimes you'd finish your ride and you'd do the voiceover on the ride and you'd finish it and then you'd have all this crackling noise which pretty much, unless you want to spend hours and hours in post fixing it, it pretty much makes that audio unusable. So, but it's a good camera, a good camera for that and especially because the file sizes are smaller. And again, when you hit, you just keep hitting uh, the the dirt roads, and you just don't know what they're going to be like. And you don't know what traffic's coming around, and a little bit of a little bit of a water crossing there. Didn't have that many water cro water crossings on the way on the border from Ecuador to to Mexico. I had a couple of pretty big ones because um, I went north of Ecuador, uh, north of Ecuador uh, to enter Peru. Um, so uh, through Vil Vilcabamba, that was the place I was trying to think of before. Um, I went north of uh, to the northern uh, northernmost uh, point, which is all dirt road, uh, two hundred something miles of dirt. Um, I think it's about two hundred miles, one hundred and fifty miles, two hundred miles of dirt. And uh, I actually got a pretty bad day. I got a, a, a little bit of a misty, rainy day, and it rained the night before, so the roads were really slippery, and I had. My second off for the trip on uh, at that uh, on that uh, crossing, um, a bit of a wake up call really, because I was getting a bit too confident. Even though the bike was the real world was slipping, I was pretty confident it was always going to grip again. So I, I kept uh, I kept it going. I didn't I didn't sort of ease up, and I ended up coming unstuck, coming around a corner. 
Um, so the, the 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 thing. So this is me. I'll just speed up the camera through here. Um, had a bit of traffic towards the end of the the route, and there's a couple. There was a couple more towns, and then it was free running, pretty much. But there was still some traffic here and there. But really good fun riding. Lots of twisties uh, in the in the last hour or two of that of that trip. Bit more road works here. That's me burping. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. So I think this one here is the largest town on the on the far side of the on the Kilatoa Kilatoa loop. Um, and I think I ended up taking a right a right turn somewhere and making a bit of a mistake. And then having to track back a little bit, but wasn't that big a deal. I knew where I was, I was having to go. I think, yeah, those. I, I turned left here, sorry, and they, they, the other cars went straight ahead and ended up in front of me. Everyone was going straight ahead, and my GPS was telling me to go left. <laughs> uh, it just seemed weird that all this traffic was going in one direction and I was getting told to go in the other direction but still trying to work it out where am I going so on, when I when I'm at a station like like I am here in, in Quito I uh, I actually um, I actually uh, take all my gear out of the bags. The only things I ever carry every day are just a basic toolkit. So I've got toolkits, I've got the full toolkit in one bag, and then I've got the basics in the other. Some more topes. And the, the thing about the speed humps is they're all over the place. Some are big and some are small. It's just another little, another town. So coming up here is what, you know, one thing I dealt with, with was one friggin' idiot and I actually have a bit of a blast at the person for it. But uh, here, here I am here. Uh, this is another one of the little roads that I went on. But this was this was towards the final stages of that, of that uh, trip. Really great roads to ride on. Fantastic fun. I stopped here at that river where I got those 360 degree photos. But you'll see coming up here, um, so I'm riding along here, all fine, and there was a bit of some some uh, some falling, uh, some dirt that had fallen on the side of the road, and uh, and uh, what happens is a car's coming the other way, and there's a rock on the road, and the car swerved the rock, and basically, you know, got within a f you know, ten meters of, of hitting me. So, you know, oh, I want to miss, I think it's coming up now. Oh, it's coming up in about 30 seconds. But, you know, what the, what the friggin' hell? You miss a little tiny rock on the road, but to kill another human being. Like, yeah, this, no, that's not it. It's a white car from memory. And it, it was just like insanity, like a, just a complete knobhead. So you see that, see, see, see here. So I'm riding, I've slowed it down for you. So I'm riding and watch what this person does. Like, just pulls, puts me over. See that tiny little rock on the road? The, the tiny little rock on the road, you know? To do that, I mean, why? Like, it's just stupidity, you know? It's not as if I had anywhere to go. I had that big pile of dirt there. I had, if he had kept his line, I could have just ridden straight through, but he just swerved that rock. Freaking, just no brains whatsoever. But anyway, I slowed down a bit after that.
just nice riding in it. These, these sort of roads, I love this sort of stuff. Even though it's a little bit rough, it's so much fun, especially when there's not a huge amount of traffic around. You don't go do anything stupid, but you can, you can, you know, you can give it the beans a little bit, you know, and have a bit of fun around the corners. You can see a fair bit in front of you as far as what's coming in that. Big drops down the left side. Just really cool riding all the way along. That road apparently washed away about a year and a half ago. I was talking to some uh, some people when I stopped and they said a few parts of the road have washed away recently as well, but I didn't see any. Just good fun riding and, um, and the thing is that the um, this is the sort of road you're going to get as you go down south, you know. Um, big cliff faces down the left, down the, down the sides and beautiful mountain ranges. A fair bit of debris on the road just about everywhere you go. Um, you've always got to keep an eye out for that. Um, and there's usually crews coming through to clean that stuff up. Um, but yeah, no, I, this was a really good fun day's riding, apart from that idiot sort of trying to ruin it. But um, I think I did, I think this, the trip was like, t a total of, the, the total of the trip was like seven and a half, seven hours. Um, 339 kilometres, which is about, um, what, a uh, hundred, 100 kilometres, uh, sorry, uh, 60, It's over 200 km, uh, 200 miles for the day, which is pretty, you know, pretty decent for these sort of roads. That's all you're really going to get when you're doing these sort of roads, and um, and you're travelling. You're not going to, you know, th 300 miles might be the maximum you'll do in a day, because uh, it is pretty hard, hard riding as well. Um, you know, your arms get a bit tired, and you're you're out of the saddle a bit, you know, especially when you go over bumps. You learn just to lift your ass off the seat. A little bit just to ride them out. Great countryside, a lot of farmland. Um, some of the bigger farms obviously not owned by the indigenous but a lot of the small farms and places are owned by them. There's a couple of little uh, echo lodges there. It's a great little term isn't it, echo lodge. You can you can pretty much get away with anything with that term. Um, <laughs> you can just fire up a, a couple of uh, woods and put a little roof on it and say it's echo. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of those things, um, mainly because most of them don't have any Wi-Fi, and they, they talk, they say things like, um, "Oh, well, oh, you know, there's some cafes and have, you know, don't have Wi-Fi. You talk to talk to one another. Well, you know, you might be travelling friggin' alone, and you might have photos to upload. You know, it's a local on his bike." Yeah, so in some of the more remote regions, I found quite a few of the Echo Lodges. I never stayed at any of them. Um, I'm sure they're fine and all that sort of stuff, but they most of the, most of the time where I've had any experience with those sort of places there, they skimp on everything, you know, and then they, they, they try to frame it as being ecologically sound because they don't have electricity or they don't have... They, they, don't, they turn... Like well, one place I stayed in... in uh, in uh, in Europe, there was an echo place, and they didn't they turned the electricity off at night because they didn't generate electricity during the evening. So they turned it off, even though the front office had power 24/7. They just didn't have power to the cabins. They're freaking lame ass. <laughs> um, anyway, it wouldn't worry me now with now that I've got that uh, anchor powerhouse because uh, uh, I don't actually need. Uh, I can last for. A, you know, with my laptops and all my gear, probably two to three days uh, without without power with that stuff. Uh, pretty skinny roads again. Quite a few little switchbacks. 
um, hairpin turns. But really good fun riding. Buses are always a worry for you. Um, but yeah, so the the next trip I did the, the next day was to uh, to the, the center of, center of the world or whatever you want to call it, uh, middle of the world. Um, it was okay. It wasn't anything very touristy place. I was in and out of there within an hour and a half, two hours. I got a couple of photos, of course, and uh, and then head home. I don't know what I said then. <laughs> um, Switchbacks. Take all the road when, you, when there's no cars. I, I could ride. I could ride for hours on this sort of stuff. Just love it. Especially when you're on a really capable bike as well, and you feel really comfortable on it. I was overtaking quite a lot of cars in the way too. Yeah, when you when you overtake cars on the sort of skinny roads, always give them a bip as you're going past them. So one thing that annoys another one of the things that annoys me about the KTM, such a big brute of a bike and it's got the most pissy little horn you've ever heard in your life. But it's uh, a lot of fun. Alright guys, uh, thanks for, for listening. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, again, leave them below.